Hello all, my name is Krishnaik and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we are going to see some of the server architecture diagram for deployment of machine learning or deep learning models in cloud. And uh, I'm going to take some example. And if you remember guys, just a few days back, we had solved a lot of problem statements uh, with respect to deep learning models like image classification techniques and all. So if I take one of the example was this particular example, again, the link of this particular video will be given in the description. So this was uh, the live session where we are implementing deep learning projects from scratch. And this was a classification problem, image classification problem, where we were trying to determine different brands of the car. And if I just go into the GitHub and see, you'll be able to see that we have all this particular IPYNB file, app.py, and this whole API or this whole web application was actually created with the help of Flask framework. But again, the model was actually created with the help of transfer learning. Now, considering this, if you really want to deploy this into the cloud, what are the possible architectures? We are going to discuss this. And this is the most basic architecture, guys. As I go ahead with different different domains, as in the upcoming videos, I will be also including some live stream data set, live stream data, and how you can actually process that data and all those architectures will be discussed. And remember guys, whatever architecture I'm going to discuss, this all practical implementation will also be done as we go ahead. So let's go ahead and try to see the architecture guys. Now, considering this, I'm just going to make it like uh, in a bigger size so that you'll be able to see this. So we will first of all go with process one. And this is just the part one guys. In the part two, I'll be telling you what they will be in the part two because I'm going to just discuss about all the possible deployment architecture with respect to a specific um, ML model or deep learning model because sometimes you also need to deploy that particular model into a mobile phone, right? So how do you do that? And uh, probably on the Monday, we'll also have some practical session regarding that. Now coming to this guys, what is the process one? In process one, we are going to expose this model as an API. So what we are going to do, we are going to deploy this particular model uh, into the cloud. And then we are going to expose that as an API to any front end application. The front end application may be like a mobile app, web app. It may be desktop app, right? It can be any other front end application. So what are the process? So first of all, you can see the first step. It is basically saying that the model training. Okay, let me just use a pen over here. Okay, so I'm just going to click this. So the model training will happen in the server. Now, what does this basically mean? This basically means that wherever you have the GPU, right? At that place, this model training will happen. Okay, once the model training will happen, so what happens after that? You can save the model with this .pkl format, .sav format, .pv format, .h5 format dot pt format dot pth format dot tfjs format this is basically tensorflow light js right tensorflow js sorry not tensorflow light the uh, tensorflow js if you don't know about dot pt okay uh, it is basically uh, if you have seen my pytorch videos i had actually created that uh, if you don't know about dot h5 usually when you are actually working with keras at that time you can use this pkl for definitely for ml models right so these are all the extensions that we can actually save the model as right so this is your ml model this is your deep learning model so it can be ml or dl models okay so whatever i am discussing these are for both now the next step that is the third step you can host these models in server side using frameworks like flask django falcon clean and export expose it as an api now this all are some web frameworks, right? This web frameworks are used to create web application also to create APIs also. But since our APIs needs to be exposed to the front end application, so we can use Flask. I hope everybody's familiar with that. Uh, we can use Django and most probably I'll be coming up soon with Django tutorials also. I'll also be showing you with Falcon and Clean. So these are some other, um, you know, frameworks where we can actually uh, create APIs uh, considering the models that we are going to host. Okay. And finally, it will be exposed as an API. Okay. Now, once we have this particular API, this API can be consumed by any front end application, including mobile app. Okay. So in mobile app also, and remember guys, this is in online mode, online mode basically means what your, your mobile application or your web application needs to have internet connection. Okay, if you if and only if, if you are having internet connection, then only you'll be able to consume these APIs. Otherwise, it'll give it'll it'll just throw you a timeout error if you don't have internet connection. Okay, so and and this particular model 
right now many application works in this specific mode you need to have internet connection then only from the front end application any input is actually sent based on that you will be getting the response now what are the examples uh, of the front end mobile app desktop app web app and etc many things okay after that you can also do one thing you can also connect with databases or s3 bucket or blob to save the output of or for data archival okay now what this basically means i'll just tell you from the flask framework once the prediction is done so whatever input is actually sent from the front end application that can be also saved in some databases or s3 bucket s3 bucket when i'm talking i'm talking about aws and in this whole uh, video i'm going to discuss about aws cloud guys okay because this is the most common cloud and i've been practicing from past two years apart from that in the future videos i'll also be coming with, with azure okay so don't worry about it so let me just drop this and let me just go and discuss about the architecture and this is just the part one you love it and this is the basic one guys it, it need not uh, i mean it is not that complicated it is very very simple to start with but you should have the habit of creating this particular architectures by your own in in the company whenever you are working someone asks you right okay what is the architecture so you should be able to uh, create this kind of figures and it is good to actually work in all presentation guys so i'm just going to rub this uh, so that you will be and trust me initially you may take time but later on when you have all this particular idea you will be able to quickly do this okay now next coming to the next thing guys so let me just go now this is the whole server architecture for deployment in cloud now let's let me just use the pen now first of all this is all the images labeled images that you have collected so we will start from here labeled images that you have correct so this is my step one okay step one after this this images you can use transfer learning you can use cnn you can use ml model any kind of techniques guys you can also use machine learning techniques you can use different kind of algorithms so all your training will happen so i have i have mentioned all the frameworks like keras and tensorflow tensorflow lite tensorflow js pytorch you can also include sklearn so i missed about that but you can use sklearn over here also okay now once you have done this particular training your model is ready okay and remember the model will be in what all format it will be in dot pkl format it can be in .h5 format, it can be in any kind of format based on the type of framework that we are using or library that we are using. If you have TensorFlow Lite, if you have TensorFlow JS, this will be in the form of JS format. PyTorch we have .pt format and all. So once your model is ready, then what we have to do is that we have to actually create a CI CD pipelines. And this is, this is what I'm talking in production. Now CI CD pipelines are just like continuous integration and continuous development. And guys, very soon I'm going to start a playlist on this also so that you'll be able to understand. Okay. The order the which I'm actually trying to show you in the same order, I'll be trying to teaching, teach you guys. Don't worry about it. Okay. So CI CD pipelines, deployments and all, we will be learning a lot. So this is nothing but continuous integration, continuous integration and continuous development. Okay. So as soon as the model training is done automatically, that new model file will be passed over here and then the deployment will happen in Amazon EC2 instance. Now here, what I'm discussing about is basically AWS. Okay. Now what is EC2 instance? So guys, if you have seen my deployment playlist there, I've discussed about different types of infrastructure. I've discussed about uh, IaaS. So this is the nothing but infrastructure as a service. I've discussed about platform as a service. If I take an example of platform as a service, the best example is Heroku. Now this in Heroku, you just have to pass the requirement.txt file and automatically all the installation will happen. They'll be selecting the platform for you. They'll, they'll be doing all the installation, everything they'll be doing. In this case, we will just be getting the machine. The machine can be with Linux, we can select, it can be Windows, it can be having some GPUs. So with the machine, we can select all the resources whenever we are working with IAS, that is infrastructure as a service. In this IAS, you have to do a lot of maintenance. You know, you have to do all the task over there. Whereas in platform as a service, everything will be handled by the server itself, by the uh, platform itself, right? So suppose if I'm selecting IAS, so suppose in this EC2 instance, if I'm using this EC2 instance, it is nothing but IAS, okay, infrastructure as a service. Now, and it can be based on the selection, like what OS you want, okay, it may be Linux, it may be Windows, it may be something else. Now, coming to this guys, 
Now inside this IS, what we do is that we do the installation, okay, installation of all the libraries that is required. And uh, if you know about CI/CD pipelines, guys, this CI/CD pipelines helps us to create the requirement.txt file. Everything we will be creating after this transfer learning, and this will get passed over here, right, in the Amazon EC2 instance. In the Amazon EC2 instance, we can also implement Docker's, Docker's and Kubernetes. Okay, Docker's is basically for containerizing and kubernetes is for scalability so in that aws e, i mean amazon ec2 instance those functionalities are already provided okay so that whole thing we can do in this and then we can consider our whole uh, project and we can deploy it over here now once we deploy it over here okay we can expose this and how it is basically implemented and how the deployment will basically happen inside this we can use frameworks like flask django Falcon, Clan, okay, it is up to you, okay. So what framework you are going to use, okay? We are going to use whether you are going to host it inside a Flask framework, whether you want to host it inside a Django or Falcon framework. That is up to you. So inside this Amazon EC2 instance, which has Linux, and usually people select Unix, Linux for this, right? So inside this, you'll also be installing Flask or Django or Falcon, and then you will be specifically reading the model. Now one more thing usually happens, guys. Whenever this model file is actually trained and created. This is also archived in the Amazon S3 instance. Why? For two specific reasons. One is versioning. Okay. Versioning of the model is actually done. Apart from that, the updated model should only be retrieved. Updated model should only be retrieved. Now, inside this EC2 instance, suppose if your model is of 1 GB, 2 GB, right? At that time, it is not possible that we store the model inside the EC2 instance. So for that case, what we do is that we store it in the S3 bucket. And after that, whenever we require that specific model, because model will be just loaded once, right? So we can read it from the S3 bucket, that whole model file, okay? And it will be getting stored over here if it is very, very huge. And then it can run in this EC2 instance, okay? In this EC2 instance. Now, when, it, when we are running this EC2 instance, that basically means we are running either of this framework, right? It is depending on you on what framework you are actually working. And inside this framework, we can create some RESTful APIs. Okay, now this RESTful APIs are actually exposed to the mobile phones, to the website application, or to the desktop application. Or to the desktop application. You can see over here. So what will happen? So suppose this is my input. In the web application, I think we can upload this image. In the mobile phone, we can capture this image. So once we capture this image, we send the response uh, sorry we send the request to this api okay then it goes to the ec2 instance okay and if had a, it has already loaded a model from here it will load it then it will provide the response okay and finally your response will be here and it will say that yes this brand is this brand is lamborghini, uh, lamborghini. okay so this is the brand of the car or this brand is audi it can be based on the brand of this particular car, you'll be getting the output. But you have to know two very important points. First of all, this AWS Amazon S3 instance, guys, I'm talking about AWS specifically. Later on, I'll be going with Azure and other things, okay? So that you'll get an idea. But the main components over here are your EC2 instance, your Amazon S3, that is your S3 buckets where you store the data, where you store any kind of data. And then suppose this, if it, this is a machine learning model also. Machine learning models are usually small. Instead of storing in S3, what you can do, you can directly store it in EC2 instance. Okay, in EC2 instance also, some amount of size of the model file is given. And remember, Docker's, uh, Docker's implementation and Kubernetes is basically done in the uh, Amazon EC2 instance. You have to also have to understand this. Okay, so here you have an option of doing that. And if you see any kind of documentation, you'll be able to see what are the steps to actually implement Docker's and Kubernetes over here. Okay, now the next thing is guys, when you get the prediction output over here, right? So before giving the prediction, what it does is that it also saves the images in the S3 bucket. And why it saves? It is basically for the archival purpose archival purpose now suppose this particular this is a new image and suppose this image also gets saved in s3 bucket okay after that this images can be used for the retraining approach okay so probably after some time you know this whole images will again get passed 
new image classification data set some additional data set will be used again transfer learning on top of those images training will happen so here you can see that what is happening here additional images additional images are getting trained after some specific time so that is the reason why some of the images get saved over here we are also saving these images it is archived okay and these images are actually again passed to this uh, app uh, data set the whole data set is again prepared the additional data set and again this transfer learning will continue again you see you have your ci cd pipeline again it will go to the s3 bucket again that whole model will go over here it will also go to the s3 bucket it will also get deployed in the ec2 instance and then again the same process will happen as more and more images will come more and more things will happen away and it will be saved okay now what are the disadvantages of this architecture definitely if you don't have internet if you don't have internet this will not work this is the main problem okay if you don't have internet definitely it will not work so sometimes you may be also creating some machine learning models which you want to work in the offline mode specifically in mobile apps right in mobile apps and that is the major scenario right now right because uh, now people are coming up with mobile apps wherein you are implementing some in the back end where you are implementing some deep learning or ml model which works in the offline so can you create any specific model that can be directly deployed in the mobile app so that you don't even though you don't have internet connection you will be able to get the output so that we are going to discuss in our next session but i hope you got the architecture i hope you got uh, the whole idea about what we are actually trying to do right so this is a very important architecture and this is the basic architecture this is the basic architecture that you have to follow okay anytime now right now i have not also used any live stream data and all so because for ml model if i specifically consider there will be some live stream data also that will be coming suppose you have some kind of diagnostic data some kind of iot data that i'll be discussing in my upcoming sessions uh, where now i'll increase complexity based on various domain but this kind of architecture is common to every domain okay so i hope you understood this particular video uh, please do subscribe the channel if you have not already subscribed this is just the part one guys in the part two i will be showing you how you can deploy uh, this whole architecture how you can deploy sorry how you can deploy your machine learning models or deep learning models uh inside the mobile app uh and it can be and it can be basically accessed in the offline mode also you will not be requiring internet okay so i hope you like this particular video please do subscribe the channel guys i'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you one and all bye bye